But I agree with you. You're not going to find spell pierce. You're not going to find days, stuff like flusterstorm and stuff like, and you know those cheap permission spells. Those aren't really going to show up to the party here. They yeah. might be in the sideboard, but and actually looking at the sideboard, those aren't really there because it doesn't make sense to have counter magic like, like that in a Charlotte's Asian deck. So I actually think that Boswell is in really good shape for this matchup, especially when he has the deck list. Yeah, I think he's in he's in reasonable shape. Um, again, Lloyd is basically trading. Uh, cards like Spell Pierce and Days for Thought Seize him to Torok. Um, game one, though, he has a lot of dead cards. Uh, however, his start is pretty good. He's got turn one Ancestral Visions, which it's obviously not going to get any better than that. Yeah. You know, that's the the best turn. I, and again, he might not even get to actually cast it. But if you're going to cast, if you're going to suspend it, you got to do it on turn one. And it looks like he's got Force of Will along with the Liana. Um, it can even cast the Tarmogoyf on turn two if he wants. So. Um, it, it, it's pretty much, a, he doesn't have any of the dead cards. He doesn't have a Baleful Strix or an Abrupt Decay in his hand or that one Toxic Deluge. Jace is probably even too slow right now I, I, as well. So um, he at least has all cards that are relatively proactive and can, can kind of help him win and control the early game. So um, can't really ask for more than that. And, uh, he, and having that Liliana in the, veil, uh, 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 the Veil in his hand is huge because it does give him um, protection from uh, a show and tell Emrakul. Because even though you can't put the Liliana into play off a of show and tell, you can put a land and maybe try to ramp into it. Yeah, hopefully he draws another land. Now he drew a thought seize for the turn to occur. So he's going to fire off with that, see if Boswell has a brainstorm, maybe hide some cards here. But Boswell's going to set down the grip. And we're going to take a look at a show and tell, a sneak attack. There's also a Gristle Brand, I believe, a Jace the Mind Sculptor. There's also an Emrakul, and then a couple of lands. So, you know, he doesn't have any of the cantrips like a Ponder or a Brainstorm, but he's got what he needs here. Yeah, he's got he's got lands. He's got uh, you know the combo pieces there, and uh, obviously Jace, um, a, a pretty good card in this matchup as well. So uh, if he draws City of Traders, we can see um, that get online really quickly. So uh, we'll see how this game plays out. Let's see what uh, he decides to take with that Thoughtseize, though. I think that you select Sneak Attack. I think that is the worst card for you to play against right now because yes. you know just they can Boswell could very simply just cast Show and Tell, put Sneak Attack in play, and pass, and then. You know, then things get pretty ugly here for Kurth. Kurth is, however, going to take Show and Tell. So Boswell's going to draw a card. He's going to put a Misty Rainforest into play. Not sure what the new card is. We're going to find out in just a second. It was a copy Ooh, of Spell Pierce. So good card there. He can actually stop uh, Liliana from entering play if Lloyd decides to go for it. Mm -hmm. Lloyd, L Lloyd just saw his hand. He knows he doesn't really have to worry about counter spells, but looks like he's going to play a Tarmogoyf here. I'm a little surprised he didn't play Liliana. I, I actually would have. Yeah, that, I, I mean, bet that he did. It's, you, it's not going to get any better than there, right? Yeah, I, I, I'm truthfully surprised, just when he has, especially when he has backup in the form of uh, Force Will plus Brainstorm. But he's going to elect not to do that. Boswell just can play land past the turn back. And and to, be, to be fair, that play just might be correct not to play it that turn. Here's a Wasteland. But there are three fetch lines in play here for Boswell, so that's not going to be very good. Now here is Liliana. And now we're going to open ourselves up here to a spell pier. So. Boswell's going to sacrifice that right away. Going to go down one less down to 17 to do so. And he's going to get a basic on. I was actually curious what land he was going to get. Mm -hmm. If he was going to get that or a volcanic. We saw it, we saw him last match against Steve Mann search out a volcanic very early. Yeah, and so. having two other sack lands, I think there's no real reason to expose yourself just yet. Mm -hmm. um, but the squeeze is definitely on Boswell, because even if he's able to counter this Liliana, which I don't think he will, I think Lloyd will probably fight him over it. Or actually, he might let it resolve because he he has to he knows that Boswell has uh, more combo pieces yep. in his hand. So, and uh, Lloyd's going to draw three cards next turn if he can. So uh, it does make Tarmogoyf bigger too. Yeah. Ends walking the graveyard, so you can actually get a clock going here. Boswell going to draw a card. That is a copy of Emrakul. Wow. That's not what we're looking that for. That is a terrible hand. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's ugly. That's for sure. Here's the visions. That's going to resolve. So Girth is going to draw three cards, two and three. Let's make it a fourth one in just a moment for his draw step, so that is a copy of Charlotte's Agent. All right, so Boswell got a little fortunate there that Lloyd didn't draw anything too crazy. He just lands a Toxic Deluge, which is basically dead, and um, he also drew a, uh, a Charlotte's Agent. That's probably the, the worst card here, but it could just hit an Abrupt Decay, so um, not the worst situation for Boswell, but he really needs to hit a land. Let's spin the wheels, shall we? Abrupt Decay. All right. All so right. Boswell got a little fortunate there, but he still needs to find land. Probably if he gets a, if he gets a uh, City Traders, that'd be great because then he can actually 
cast, or any land basically, then he can cast Jace. Mm -hmm. And Loy probably has to, uh, actually I don't know if he has to fight over that, but um, it'll at least allow, if, if it resolves, then he can brainstorm. If it doesn't resolve, at least he got rid of the Force of Will. There's a brainstorm and Fossil's gonna cast that immediately. Couldn't cast it fast enough. So three cards coming. Hit one and two. Let's make it three. Let's see what Boswell wants to do and what he found. An attack and probe and double force of will. Yikes, not a land. Well, he can still put two of the fatties on top of his deck, sacrifice the land, then cast a taxi and probe to try to draw into a city of traders. So here's the here's the thing. I actually just thought about that. So let's say he puts two cards back, right? He sacrifices a, a land to make it a shuffle, goes down to eight. Hard cast, or excuse me, alternate cast for taxing probe goes down to six. Mm -hmm. Sacks of fetch land goes down to five. He's facing lethal then. Well, no, I, he, if he if he gets City of Traders, I think he, he goes down to five. He casts Jace. Lloyd might counter it. Then you f you fight back with your own force, and then Jace resolves, and then you just bounce Tarmogoyf. Tarmogoyf, okay. Gotcha. So then you go down to three, but then next turn, you can just go sneak attack Grizzlebrand Emrakul. As long as it's... I think it has to be yeah, it has to be city of traders. It can't be tomb, right? I'm sorry. It, it has to be city of traders, not tomb. Yeah, it has to yeah. be city of traders. Okay. Yeah. So okay. I, I think if you're Boswell, you still probably go for it because you're you're facing six next turn anyway, so it's not going to get much better for you. Yeah. Two force wolves were not bad, but the fact that he has to pay life for those isn't so good. Uh, so it looks like he's just going to cast the taxing probe here. Mm -hmm. So. Let's see here. He's at eight. He's going to take six next turn, dropping to two. Um, so a Jace won't really do anything for him. And it, it kind of turns off some of his outs here because he's got Scalding Tarn and a Forcible. He won't be able to cast it. So well, it looks like it didn't matter because he didn't draw the uh, he didn't draw the um, City of Traders anyway. So yeah, that's just an island. Going to have to pass the turn back. I'm not sure if Boswell has an out now for his next turn. Well, I think he's still... Let's see here. He's going to go to two. Yeah, I, th that's the problem, is that I think he might... I, if he has a... I don't think he has a volcanic island under there. Yeah, he has three islands and then a scalding turn. That's it. Yeah. So the scalding turn, of course, can attack for a red. But let's say that Bo Boswell just draws a volcanic island. He can play... He can play that... I guess... Yeah, okay. If he draws... No, but he has to, he has to force back in order to get the result, because Lloyd still yeah, has yeah, a force. Yep, yep, so okay, yep. that's going to be the last point. Yep. That's it. I think that's actually it. Lloyd's just going to play a Polluted Delta. Uh, show and Tell. Show and Tell might do it. Show and Tell put Gristlebrand into play? Yeah, because then the block and the lifelink, you'll stay alive. This play's pretty adorable. Go after your fetch land. I think, if you think about it, Boswell has to think about what are my outs. You have to realize that you're probably only out here is, uh, let's see here. If you get a Volcanic Island and you draw a Spell Pierce, no, that's not it. That's not going to do it. I actually, I actually think he has to let this resolve. I think he's got to let it resolve, and he's got to get a... Uh, he's got to draw show and tell. Show and tell, yeah. Yeah, I actually, I actually think that's his only out. Yeah, you're going to get your scalding turn wastelanded. <laughs> that is what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, that's a good play by Lloyd. All right, and Jeez. Boswell does do that. All right. Let's see if Andrew can do it. One draw. This... It's a oh, <laughs> it's always the probe. He's gonna hard cast this, but this is not gonna save him. You know, take a look. He's gonna see the same cards again. Force plus brainstorm, toxic delusion, verdant catacombs. Mystery card coming. That's a spell no. and that's gonna do it. So Lord Kurth is gonna win game number one here over Andrew Boswell. Charlotte's bug up a game over Sneak and Show. I actually expected Boswell to win game number one. It seems like a pretty good matchup for him game one, but he does get some pretty good tools after sideboard yeah i mean honestly it was a pretty uh you know that that thought sees kind of put a wrench in his plan he had yeah. a show and tell he kept a pretty it was a solid hand didn't really have any of the ponders or preordains or or the brainstorms that you need to kind of make sure you hit your land drops mm -hmm. obviously that hurt him because he got stalled on land there and wasn't able to ever get sneak attack into play obviously there were several turns there where he could just win the game yeah. um but uh yeah I, I still think that he's in pretty good shape for games two and three all right it's trivia time for six months you ready for a question you want me to give the question you, you ready to give the question 
Tell the truth. Right. Tell the truth. No, I'll give the question. All right, fair enough. SCG Premium. That's the hashtag you're going to use at SCG Live, so you should be following. Go subscribe to your six month question. Of course, we'll announce the winner at the conclusion of our semi final round. Fire away. Okay, so uh, SCG, uh, SCG will be running a Grand Prix in Orlando. Uh, what weekend will they be running it? It's in October. It is in October. Which weekend in October will be running it? Name the dates. It's Friday through Sunday. Which weekend will Grand Prix Orlando be running? Uh, it's in October this year. Star City Games are going to be running it, and it's going to be huge. It I have a gonna feeling it's going to be one of the big ones. It is gonna Limited, be. new set, yep. people want to play it. It's going to be a lot of fun. And Sweet obviously, play, Star City, they run sweet Grand Prix. We try Sweet to. play, Matt. We try Sweet to. play, Matt. You can name that. Weekend that we're going to be there, hashtag SCG Premium. Make sure you're following SCG Live. And as usual, we will announce the winner at the conclusion of our semifinal round as we will turn our attention back to the match and the sideboards now. Lloyd Kerr taking a look at Andrew Boswell's deck list. Boswell can see Lloyd Kerr's sideboard just like you guys can at home. Two Nile Spellbomb, a Null Rod, two Disfigure, two Fluster Storm, a Force of Will, two Golgari Charm, a Liliana the Veil, two Hymnatorak on Thoughtseize, an additional Toxic Deluge. What do you like, my friend? He's got a lot of discards. So Thoughtseize, him to Torek, Liliana, the Veil, those four cards I love. And I love the Flusterstorm and Force of Will. So uh, a, a nice combination of um, discard as well as uh, counter spells. Obviously, if you're bringing in Flusterstorm, I don't think you can keep in the Shardless Asians. Um, huh. I, well, well, you can. I, you can. <laughs> I think there's basically nine cards that he wants to board out. Or actually... He, there's f definitely, if, you, if you're if you going for the Flusterstorm plan, I can see boarding out your Shardless Agents. Um, but that means your Ancestral Visions get a lot worse. Uh, you have a Toxic Deluge, which has to come out. And I don't think you need all four Abrupt Decay, but I think if you know your opponent's bringing in Blood Moon, since you have that Swamp, and Swamp Deathrite Shaman isn't out for you, I think it's worth keeping in some number of Abrupt Decays. So I think it's kind of important for him to at least leave in some of those. Normally, you'd probably board out all four. Like, Stephen Mann probably can afford to board out most of them. Um, but again, even if you don't get a Death Rite Shaman, floating mana in response to Blood Moon is another way you can guarantee getting rid of a Blood Moon uh, because uh, they can't counter it, obviously. So I think probably Shardless Agent, Toxic Deluge, and maybe some combination of the Visions are going to be coming out. And he wants to bring in basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, I'd probably see him boarding out some number of Charlotte's Agents, Toxic Deluge, and then and Ancestral Visions. Take a look at the other side here. Graph Trigger's Cade, three Blood Moons, Echoing True, two Swan Song, three Through the Reach, three Pyroclasm, Shattering Spree, and a Besager who shelters all. Much like our last matchup where Boswell did defeat Stephen Mann playing Bug Delver, you have to imagine those Blood Moons are going to be coming in, and that's a huge game plan. Yeah, it's a huge game plan, and it, it kind of puts a little pressure on Lloyd because you don't want to keep those Abrupt Decays in in this matchup, but you're kind of forced to. So Blood Moon's definitely coming in. We saw we saw him bring in Swan Song against Blood Delver. Um, I'd imagine he's going to bring it in in this matchup as well. And, and then I, you know, I, I kind of felt like Pyroclasm was really good, uh, a card to bring in against Blood Delver. Um, but it didn't look like he brought it in, and it's certainly not nearly as good against Charlotte's Bug as it would be against Delver. So um, those cards probably not coming in. So probably just Swan Song and Blood Moon we're going to see from him. And, uh, you know, he's got some work to do. He's going to be on the play this game, but um, I, I don't know. This isn't the similar situation to the last round. He was able to win. He was able to steal that first game. And uh, I think that kind of uh, really helped him win the match. Obviously, Blood Moon can resolve a little easier on the play. On the draw, I think it's a little bit harder, uh, particularly because Lloyd has, you know, thought seizes and uh, more ways to kind of counter a, a Blood Moon, uh, even just having two mana up. Yeah, uh, it, it's tough to just play Blood Moon into that, knowing your opponent has a Warp Decay. So, we'll see how Andrew's able to navigate this. He really, we'll see. Basically, I think he's got a still got a good shot to win this game, but obviously, Game Three is going to be tough. I thought he was going to be okay because I thought he was going to win Game One, which meant that even if he goes to Game Three, he'd be on the play again. So, okay. now it's going to be tough. Well, Mr. Boswell, we'll take a look at opening hand. He will be on the play here. See if he can find a Blood Moon or something else sweet to do. Lloyd Kurth. Kind of feels like he stole game one, honestly. But he was able to get the job done with the help of a rather large Tarmogoy. So we'll see what Boswell can find here for his opening hand. You see a Besaju, among other things. He's giving it a long Wow, Besaju, really? That's surprising. I guess I guess it's not that bad. I mean, again, your opponent is does have wasteland, so um 
Not sure I love that card in this matchup, uh, especially because you really have to worry more about discard in this matchup than anything else. Creeping Tar Pit here for Kurth. Boswell, after playing an island. You see a Lotus Petal over there, and there's also a Brainstorm in hand. Good old Crystal Brand as well. Just gonna play a Scalding Tarn, maybe just, yeah, pass the turn back. Nothing too crazy going on. Pass the turn. Let's just take our time. Let's see if Poseishu ends up uh, helping him win this game. I, like you, am a little bit surprised to see you in. Just, yeah, I mean, just a little. Poseishu through the breach is good. Poseishu show and tell, I mean, knowing your opponent's gonna have three Lilianas, it's not that, that good. Good. I mean, yeah. it's it can be, but. Um, it can't help you cast Sneak Attack, that's for sure. That's a touch awkward. So let's see, Boswell using that Brainstorm, um, ho holding on to that Brainstorm to make sure he can protect himself from any discard. And it looks like Lloyd has a Golgari Charm in his hand. Yeah, it looks like Lloyd might have boarded into a Golgari Charm. That's another card that can do double duty. It can kill uh, Blood Moon, but it can also kill um, sneak, attack. sneak attack. So there's a lot of times in this matchup, particularly because you don't want to have your sneak attack be taken by discard, that players will just run it out there naked and hope that they get to untap and then put the creature in play. I see that happen a lot. Yeah, However, that's really smart. Yeah, because Boswell knows he doesn't have Maelstrom Pulse. Maybe he doesn't realize he'd bring in Golgari Charm as well. But again, being able to deal with uh, sneak attack and Blood Moon, I really like that. There is Passager who shelters all. Pay two life. Add one to your mana pool. If that mana is spent on an instant or sorcery, it can't be countered. So enchantment and sneak attack can be countered. You have to pay the toll to actually use that thing for mana. Yeah, so interesting. He did draw the show and tell. So I think if he actually uses cast show and tell through the Boseju, um, Lloyd doesn't have a Liliana. And even if he does, Boswell does have a, uh, a uh, Grizzle Brand that he can put into play. So he can actually draw a lot of cards, try to get a Force of Will to force the Liliana if Lloyd even does draw one. So I'd be surprised if Boswell doesn't pull the trigger and just cast Show and Tell with that Poseishu. So Poseishu might actually win him the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll see how it goes. Quick update for you guys on the match. Spencer Agenda does win game number one here over Dustin Shiley. So Esper Death played up a game against Punishing John. Did not expect to see that happen. So, so right. Spencer, Spencer was the... It, Excuse me, was and is the four seed. Dustin's the eight, so. Lotus Paddle, uh-oh. It's time to go. Are we going to see a show and tell? Let's see. I, I don't know. I mean, Boswell, knowing, knowing he can get a, Lilia, a Grizzlebrand into play, I mean. Because if you can get a Grizzlebrand into play, you can draw 14 cards. And then if he's able to figure out some way to stop oh. it. Oh, wow. Is this going to be a Force of Will targeting Lotus, Lotus Petal? Petal. Interesting. Oh. I did not expect that. <laughs> All right. That, hey, so that, now I think Boswell's definitely going to start casting <laughs> Show and Tell. <laughs> that resolves, is what Andrew says. He's going to slide some mana over here. And looks like, yeah, we're going to go the Show and Tell route this time. <laughs> he's going to have to pay two to do so, but... When you're I think he's force, okay with that. Yeah, when you're putting a force of wells your lotus paddle, that's a big sign of weakness, in my opinion. All right, so let's see here. If you're Lloyd, do you play the Goyf here, or do you get a land into play? I think you get a land into play so that you can get five mana to play next turn in case you draw Liliana and you can play around Spell Pierce. Hmm. I mean, obviously, it's it's risky, but... Oh, so it looks like we're just going to see... What a giant oh, oh, my, my God. gosh. Unbelievable. Poor sequencing from Boswell. He does not see oh, this coming. No. This is the exact situation we were talking about. Yeah. So what Boswell does is he puts in sneak attack off of the show and tell. And he says, all right, I'm going to sacrifice my skull and tarn. And Lloyd Chris says, hold one minute, please. I wow. will sacrifice and I will kill your sneak attack before we ever get to activate it. What a blowout. This is a beating for multiple reasons. But the biggest one is that the show and tell and the sneak attack, which were two ways to go off, now he has no ways to go off. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say just because the enchantment goes to the graveyard and boosts up the power. Yeah, that's of the that's another reason. Yeah, Tarn Tar 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 bigger. That's insane. But his hand is now just big creatures. That's unbelievable. Yeah. B uh, I, and I actually was going to say, I wonder if Boswell should sack the Scalding Tarn just to thin out his deck. Sure. Because, you know, you, you want to do it in order to draw cards off Grizzlebrand. So why don't you just do it ahead of time? 
um, because he's going to do it. You know, you're going to do it this turn because you want to draw cards with Grizzlebrand, so why not just do it before? Uh, wow, great. And, and and this is the thing. You, Boswell probably expected him maybe to keep in Abrupt Decay, but Golgari Charm, um, that he didn't think about that card. It's not a card you typically think is going to come in against uh, this deck. There are situations where you can get him with it. So now Tarmogoy is going to come across here for four. The thing here for Kurth is he's going to go reaching. He's got a Death Rite Shaman. His hand is not the best. What he needs to do is he needs to get this game over with immediately. So, you know, maybe fire up that Creeping Tarpet next turn. Death Rite Shaman activations for draining. Get this bad boy over with because possible it only takes one draw. And that, that's what I mean. His draw this turn was show and tell. Oh, wow. So let's see here. Yeah, because Lloyd had him on a two-turn clock yep. no matter what. Um, now Boswell has a show and tell. What does he want to do here? He's got a brainstorm and a show and tell. I think it's got to be show and tell put Gristlebrand into play. Because at least Gristlebrand, you can get some cards back. You can win the race, obviously. I don't know. I mean, lane. but do you lead with brainstorm here? That's the thing. I think I think Boswell's just afraid of of Lloyd having I think that Golgari charm play basically shook Boswell to his core. Yeah. <laughs> and now he's just not sure. He, I think he's just afraid of a lot of different things here. Is there any reason to leave a brainstorm? I mean, there's not really a lot of counter matches that you have to play around. You know, again, he knows the deck list, so he doesn't have to worry about... I mean, yes, there's Fluster Storms in the sideboard, sure, but one was removed to Force of Will, so he doesn't have to worry about too much, realistically. I think he's safe to just cast Show and Tell and just go for it. And there's not really too many bad things that can happen. Well, if you, if you find a Force of Will... You could actually show and tell an Emrakul into play. That's the, what's one possibility. Sure. Because then you can counterspell Liliana. All right, Boswell is going to go with it. Looks like a brainstorm. All right. And the other thing Boswell has to concern himself with is that Lloyd did pitch a Flusterstorm to a Force of Will. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you might think, okay, well, maybe he's just really strong. Maybe he has a lot of counterspells. There's three cards. Ancient Tomb is among them. There's also a Lotus Petal in there. Don't know the third card that he found. Looks like it's just another land. So nothing special about that Brainstorm. Wow, this is a, a much tighter game than I think either of us expected. Yeah, so Tarmogryph currently a 4 or 5, it looks like. So wait, land, instant, sorcery, enchantment, artifact. Yeah, so my, yeah, I think Tarmograph is actually a 5-6. Uh, so let's see here. Either way, though, I don't think that changes what Boswell wants to do here. Yeah, I mean, we'll make sure, we'll check and make sure that is correct here really quickly, but Boswell's still going to continue to play his game, obviously. So let's see here. If he shows and, if he plays show and tell, what do you think? You think you go for Grizzlebrand? It's, you basically get to draw seven cards. Um... Deathrite Shaman came into play this turn, so it's not going to get activated. Creeping Tarpet can come over for three, drop you to ten. And then you go to eight. All right, so show and tell here. Uh, let's see, I think he's going to put a Grizzlebrand into play. <sighs> it's a tough decision now. Which creature do you put in? I, I'm still in favor of Gristlebrand. I have been from the start. He's gonna go oh, with wow. Emrakul. All right. So he, this is gonna be really tricky though because he's at he's at ten currently, correct? Yeah. So if he activates activates Creeping Tarpet, drops him to seven, drains him with uh to, to with Death Rite Shaman, drops him to five. five. He can actually sacrifice six permanents other than a Death a Tarmogoyf and just kill him, right? Yep. And Kurt Thiesen has a land in his hand. Yeah, he has a land, too, so oh, he doesn't no. have to sacrifice the Polluted Delta. Oh, no. Yeah, and Kurt is going right for the tar pit. Oh, boy. Yeah, so Fire this that is... Up. Uh, this, yeah, I, I, I'm with you. I think you have to get the Grizzlebrand to play because of this reason alone. I mean... I think, the, I mean, the reason I want a Grizzlebrand to play is just in case, you know, Liliana shows up, I can draw some cards, but it, obviously you go from 10 to 3, so that's not an option, but assuming that you're able to get a hit in, I mean, basically I look at Grizzlebrand as the line of text we're drawing cards isn't even there, it's just, I have a 7-7 life, like, yeah. can you beat that? sometimes that's good enough. Yeah. And now, Boswell's gonna need more help. But he, kno uh, I believe he knows what he's drawing, he had a fetch line to play, yeah. he sacrifice. Oh, boy. I think he might become the same yeah, position Boswell, that you and I Yeah, are. Boswell made a, a slight error here. It's the, it, it's the wrong fatty. <laughs> Very rarely 
Do you lose because you chose the wrong fatty? This is... You know, I can't believe I lost because I put a 15-15 into play instead of a 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, yeah. He's brought the wrong thing to class twice. <laughs> so yeah, here, if, Bos if Boswell attacks, Annihilator sure goes in the stack. Lloyd activates Death Rite Shaman, drops Boswell to five. He sacrifices six permanents. He doesn't have to sacrifice either the Death Rite or the Tarmogoyf. Yeah, and... Uh, he has to... Pa oh, my goodness. He just has to... Pa and passing doesn't even really do anything, no. right? He just goes on to five now. He's going to untap. Well, activate Tar Pit, put him down to two, drain you again. That's it. And Kurth is, <laughs> Kurth is sped up a little bit here because yeah. he sees it. He says, get that out of here, get that out of here, get you out of wow. here. Lloyd Kurth is going to win this match over Andrew Boswell. Two games to zero. Shardless Bug is moving on to the finals, defeating Sneak and Show. Impressive, impressive win there for Lloyd, honestly. And uh, kind of vindication because he, he, he lost in the top four of the standards. So now mm -hmm. he moves on to the finals. One of these players is going to go back to the finals. Yeah, Boswell.